Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions about hard clipping, soft clipping, and clippers in general. Clipper plugins, right? Seems to be like all the rage. Everything is clippers, new clipper plugin, clip, 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 gold clip, orange clip, standard clip, clippity clip. We're gonna clip it up. And then I took my hair and I just clipped it all off. In this video, I actually wanna explain what clipping is. Hard clipping, soft clipping, and oversampling, and how that all works together. Hopefully, I'm gonna demystify some things for you guys that are watching this. And if I do, please, drop some love on the video, share the show. All right, let's dive in. Before we get started, I wanna explain a little bit about where clippers usually work the best in a mastering chain. Now, of course, you could use a clipper on a subgroup, like a drum mix bus or a vocal mix bus or really anything. And hard clipping versus soft clipping, we're gonna get into all that, especially with oversampling, because I feel like a lot of people don't really understand what those things are and those features, and they don't know why they're turning them on, why they're turning them to 10x or 4x or 20x on oversampling and their computer's crashing and they're like, yo, what am I doing here? I'm going to talk about all that stuff in this video. So let's go. First things first, where do we put the clipper in the actual chain on the mastering? I tend to put a clipper right before my last limiting on the track. Now I kind of change it back and forth. Sometimes the clipper comes at the very last plugin in the chain, but oftentimes it's right before the last limiter phase. All right. So let's check out these clippers. First of all, the master bus, let's break that down. UAD manly variable mu, doing some very light compression and adding some harmonics from driving the input, which is tubes. We know it's a plugin, but it's modeling the tube circuitry of the Manly Variable Mu. Then I have the Gold Foss doing some cleanup and kind of taking care of uh, EQing for me a little bit, separating things a little bit more. And then we have the Sooth too, which is doing some kind of soothing on the top end. And I have four times ultra on the oversampling. We'll explain that again in this video and what oversampling is exactly. And then I have the Ozone 9 plugin from Isotope, which is doing some dynamic EQing and the Maximizer, which is doing some limit and then I'm going to pop on my clipper. Now I have three clippers here. I have the standard clip, I have the gold clip, and I have the orange clip. And we're gonna talk about how all these different clippers work differently, but they're all doing the same thing. They're all doing either hard clipping or soft clipping. So the best way to think about hard clipping is to think about it, if you're trimming bushes or your hedges, right? You have a tree and you take a chainsaw and you just chop the tree, just the tip of the tree right off, that's hard clipping. Straight up, it's just a hard cut. It's cutting off the peaks of the transients of the information that you're feeding it. Okay, soft clipping is like taking that tree, coming up to it with some shears, and by hand, softly rounding off the top of the tree and taking off just little peaks, but rounding it. Okay, so soft clipping is the knee. It's like a slower knee, right? So shaping it shaping the waveform. Oftentimes it's more musical, add some harmonics and distortion, coloration, depending on the plugin, they all have different algorithms and different harmonics that they're adding, odd, even, even only, odd only, etc. And with hard clipping, you're just clipping the top, okay? You're just shaving it right off, all right? So hopefully that makes sense as far as the debate between what soft clipping and hard clipping is. That's all it is. That's all that's explained right there. Now with the standard clip, you have these modes you have the soft clip pro and you have the classic and the hard clip and then you have the ratio two to one all right i'm only going to talk about the soft clip and the hard clip if you turn on hard clip it's again just truncating the signal right at the top of the peaks anything that crosses the threshold it just truncates it and your threshold is here this is where you're going to clip so are you going to clip at zero or are you going to clip at 0.6 db negative 0.6 db let's see this as we play this music so you can really see what hard clipping is doing so let's turn that on and you're going to get a little visual representation down here in this window As you can see, it's taking the top of the transients and it's just truncating them. It's chopping it off. And the way you use this clipping, this sort of hard clipping, is to give yourself more headroom. 
right? Because you're taking those peaks and you're chopping them off and then you can bring up the low level information more and you get that sausage, right? You get that flat, you know, dynamics kind of get killed. And that's kind of the trade off with hard clipping is your dynamics and your transients aren't as hard hitting because they're getting chopped off. So a lot of people like soft saturation, soft clipping because we're not chopping it off so much. We're kind of rounding it. It's a little bit more musical. So let's check out the soft clipping algorithm here. And I really like the Soft Clip Pro on this. And this is just going to kind of round that out. And I'll A, B these. I'll flip B between them. And I'll also take up this saturation here. You can take up the percentage. So check it out. two different algorithms for either soft clipping or hard clipping and truncating. Now let's check out these other clippers like gold clip and you can see what's going on here with the soft clip and the hard clip. And we're really talking about a knee when we talk about soft clip versus hard clip. If you have a hard knee, once it passes the threshold, it's going to chop the top. If you have a soft knee, it's going to round, right? So the clipping comes in in a round fashion. And you can see that here on these little, um, you know, the UI here. You can see the clipper. If I click on this, you have a hard clip, you have a classic, which is in between. It's like a hard and soft, right? In between. And then you have a hard clip here and you have the modern, which is a softer clip. Okay. And that is just all it is. That's exactly explained. Now, if you want to clip, you just take this down on the ceiling or you push up into the clip. So if you want it to clip at negative 0.1, cool. You could just push more gain into that clipper so that you're clipping the tops. If you want to take this down and not drive the input, then you just find where those peaks are and you'll see it in this graph. Let's check it out. So there you go, hard clipping versus soft clipping. Now, lastly, the orange clip, and this one's actually pretty, it'll show you pretty easily, like visually what a soft clip and a hard clip is by literally just turning this knob up. So when you turn this all the way up, you're hard clipping, right? As you take it down, you're soft clipping, right? And you can be anywhere in between. You can kind of like round it off a little bit or you can just clip the tops right away. Same thing, you got a ceiling, you got an input push. That's all it is, it's very, very simple. Hopefully this is like explaining the clipping idea here, okay? This is just clipping the tops, the peaks, the transients, whatever information is hitting the most, you have peak and you have RMS. RMS is like the overall sound. Like if you're in a room and there is a motor going and it's going <laughs> The RMS of the room comes up, right? But imagine that motor's going and then every once in a while there's a backfire of the motor. So it's like pop, pop, right? And every time it pops and I probably just clip the microphone and that's not good clipping. That's like digital clipping distortion and you have no control over that digital clipping and that's why it sounds so much harsher. So when you go over zero in your DAW at 24 bit or 16 bit and you clip that, you're literally going to be adding artifacts and digital distortion and things that you can't control. So clippers are a great way to control that clipping and make it more musical. And that's why we use clippers. We use clippers because we want to get louder records. We want to saturate the tops and the peaks. We want to chop them off or we want to round them off with soft clipping. And we want to be able to control that clipping, right? With digital clipping, if you go over and you just start pushing your master fader up, when you make that bounce, you're going to hear artifacts. Unless you're at 32 bit floating point, which gives you a ton more dynamic range and you can recover those peaks, which means if I clipped digitally in 32 bit floating point, I can bring that file back into Logic, Pro Tools, whatever, and I can bring the file gain down and I'd see the peaks would come back because you have 32 bit floating point, which is like dynamic range insanity, right? So it can take digital clipping, all right? But this is what, how we do it with 24 bit audio. We try to clip with clippers because it's going to give us control over our peaks. And when we control the peaks, we can go louder into the limiter. Now, why use a clipper? instead of a limiter because a limiter is going to literally turn down the peaks so you can get pumping artifacts, right? So a limiter, you cross the threshold, the limiter turns it down. 
It's like bleh, bleh, volume wise. It doesn't clip the peak. It doesn't take care of it and truncate it or soften it and round it and add harmonics to it. Some limiters do that actually. But for the most part, it just turns it down on an attack and release setting, right? And a lot of limiters have a very immediate attack. And, you know, some of them have IRC, like intelligent release controls where it's adaptive, right? But others you could set the attack and release. But that's the big difference between limiters. You can get a lot of, if you're hitting it with sh like crazy amounts of transit, you're trying to take those peaks down by turning them down it's going to be you're going to get all these artifacts you're going to get things that are like the pumping effect hopefully i explained that well i feel like i'm like jacked up on caffeine talking about this but to finish off this video i want to talk about oversampling now because that is a huge part of clipping audio now if we're going to use a clipper and we start to hard clip something or soft clip something we introduce harmonics and distortion right with hard clipping you're going to clip off the transient which is going to give you artifacts no matter what it does not matter so if we oversample with oversampling like here you go you have two times all the way up to 256 times oversampling if i am sampling right now at 44.1k it means 44.1 thousand samples per second in my daw or 48k or 96k whatever it is pick it times that by eight times that by 16 times that by 10 whatever it is on the oversampling so now we're taking a picture with a lot of megapixels if you have a camera that's taking like let's say 60 megapixels 64 megapixels versus 12 megapixels we have a lot more data in 64 megapixels when we oversample 44.1 at 10 times now we're getting 441,000 samples per second right so that's over sampling and then when it bounces the audio it takes it back down so when it takes it through the process it over samples it it gives us all this information which really helps with the top end the high end right and i'm talking about like 20k 16k you know up at the top top because it's over sampling so many times that's what you get the most of is the high frequencies right so this is a really interesting thing because if you don't have over sampling then you could get artifacts you can get aliasing distortion distortion and things like that when you make a bounce because you're clipping you're adding artifacts to the signal you know but if you oversample it then you're going to get all that distortion and artifacts and all that stuff you're getting a lot more information so the process can smooth that stuff out make it more musical etc so that's what oversampling is for when it comes to clipping hopefully this video is explaining what soft clipping hard clipping oversampling is in these plugins and it's very very important that you understand these concepts when you're using clippers because you know i see people just clipping the shit out of their music not using oversampling not making you know this stuff really work for them they're just trying to get a really loud record and it turns out to just you know be sounds like a big turd so use these processes sparingly know what you're doing with them and understand that every single one of these clippers has its own character so for example the orange clip is modeled after the you know very famous clipper obviously it's like fl studios clipper right so it's modeled after that algorithm so you're going to get different harmonics with the soft clip and the hard clip that are introduced with this plugin compared to standard clip compared to gold clip and gold clip i would say is probably the most professional out of all of these because you're getting a bunch of other features you're getting the gold these curves the gold curve you're also getting the clipping right the clipper you could turn these things on and off by the way you could bypass them and you're also getting this gold knob which is introducing other compression limiting harmonic structure stuff and you're getting alchemy which is like a high-end uh, limiter so it's basically taking down the high end from like one or 2k above so you can clip into it and then you can take down the top so it's not clipping the top as much. Now you can also go into the back end of this when you hit these wheels and you could see that there's oversampling all built in here with real time and offline, which means you could leave it on high in real time. And then when you bounce it, have it on extra pristine, which is gonna oversample by, I don't know, 24, you know, a hundred million. <laughs> it doesn't matter, whatever it is. But the whole idea of oversampling is so that we can get more information from the audio and we can avoid when we bounce the audio avoid that <laughs> those little weird aliasing artifacts and distortion artifacts so use oversampling when you're bouncing and you're using hard clipping or soft clipping but especially hard clipping now if you got anything from this video please share it drop some love in the comments ask any questions you got all right till next time peace